there is no such thing as an alpha roar. I'm still getting questions about this to this day. This is a misconception, a basic misconception of Teen Wolf canon. And perhaps worse than thinking that this roar is somehow unique to alphas, people believe this non-existent special alpha roar has two completely contradictory effects, forcing another werewolf to shift into beast mode or immediately calming a werewolf down to a tame pup. And the belief remains widespread even after I had Jeff Davis specifically break it down for all of us in this video. The werewolf roar has always been one of those things where the canon conflicts with what I witnessed while watching the show. These clips sound exactly the same to me. If anything, Scott's very first roar is deeper and more impressive than Peter's roar in Night School. Then there's Deucalion's roar that doesn't sound exactly the same as Peter's, but had a similar effect on Scott. Now, Canon tells us that Peter and Deucalion had a little something extra in their roar that caused Scott to transform. I can do it. You can? Yeah, remember the night that Peter trapped us in the school? In the gym, he was able to make me turn using just his voice. Deucalion did the same thing in the distillery. just can't hear it. They are different, but they're not especially louder or anything else. In fact, I still think Scott's very first roar is the most impressive. But back to season three. Scott needed to roar in order to get Malia to change back, and here's what he eventually did. <laughs> Again, it doesn't sound all that different to me from his first roar. There might be a few higher notes in there, but that could just be the difference in the recordings I have. It just seems the same to me, and yet it did manage the desired effect. Now, I'm not a person to just let a canon conflict like this sit, so I took it to Jeff directly asking what is the effect of the roar on both Supernatural and the human folks involved with Scott. Now, Jeff says it's kind of a clarion call for Scott's betas and that the effect extends to the non-Supernatural members of the pack. They did that eye glow thing with Isaac to show how the roar actually gives his betas strength and courage at the same time. Jeff then compared it to this scene from Return of the King in which a bunch of scared men and women are about to take on a massive army of monstrous foes. Yeah! Now, I understand the science behind the rousing battlefield speech from Tolkien. These people are in total fight or flight mode. Adrenaline and other brain-pumping chemicals are flooding their bodies raising their heart rates and making them sweat. The speech, or in the case of Teen Wolf, the roar, speaks to the most primitive portion of the brain and produces even more of those chemicals until they're all totally pumped. This is what we see with Styles' reaction. 
That's what I'm talking about. But in the supernaturals, we have the added element of a divine spark that has an even deeper well of primitive understanding. The roar speaks to the monster and brings it out. <laughs> In season one, we saw this was particularly difficult for Scott to control. He had a fit and, in fact, gave in to the primitive instinct. But by season three, Scott had gained enough control to resist his monster. It still showed on his face, but he didn't lose it. Like I said, the show kind of lied to us, making us believe the roar was something that it's not that there's something extra special about when an alpha vocalizes now that's partly due to this scene with derek and isaac from season two people really don't like it when i point out that there is nothing supernatural about this reaction Y'all remember, Isaac was locked up on the full moon and managed to get out. But then Derek swooped in. Yeah, this reaction doesn't have anything to do with Derek specifically. It's all about Isaac. Well, it's... It's about Isaac and his dad. The jailhouse reaction is just set there to remind us of this scene. <laughs> Absolutely. Spotless. Yeah, the werewolf fight can fix a lot of things, but nothing changes the reality of being an abused kid. But to understand that there is no magic in what is essentially a deep-throated scream, one needs only to look at this scene from Season 3's Fireflies. Derek is this close and screaming full force in their faces, and yet there's zero effect on either Boyd or Cora. Now, unlike Isaac, it is clear that these two are beyond listening to anyone in that moment. But the fact remains, if it was some special power that an alpha has to overwhelm with their voice, being extra angry shouldn't make these two immune to that power. The bottom line, a roar is just a yell, and getting yelled at causes all sorts of documented effects on the brain. It can be a positive yell, like Jeff described, rousing positive emotions and feelings of excitement, or it can be an abusive yell that triggers fear and fight or flight reaction. 